So the next speaker we have is a speaker from the University of Bremen, uh, Dr. Sonja Mangold. And uh, uh, Sonja will talk about uh, crowd working and uh, data privacy. So she's a lawyer, but has run an empirical study on uh, crowd working uh, on 32 uh, crowd working platforms. And uh, the study is quite new, so we are very much interested in the results and uh, are very much looking forward to your presentation. So thank you very much, uh, Sonja, for the presentation. Thank you very much for the kind uh, welcome. So I hope the tech technique will work. Um, Yes, to uh, briefly introduce myself, uh, I'm a lawyer and uh, my name is Sonja Mangold. I'm a lawyer and a postdoctoral uh, researcher uh, here in Bremen. Um, as uh, Professor Hornhoff uh, said, I will focus uh, on the important issue of privacy protection aspects of crowd labor uh, markets. Um, it is uh, undisputed in the discourse that enormous amounts of personal data are collected and processed on crowd working platforms. And we can draw parallels here to other forms of businesses um, with the particularity that crowdsourcing also affects uh, the important issue of worker protection, worker data protection. So um, why is the issue of uh, privacy and crowd working so important. Um, we already have a lively debate about the consequences of crowd work for privacy. For example, the German Chancellor, Angela Merkel, warned in a speech to the Federation of German Trade Unions last year of the risk of a, quote, massive digital exploitation in the internet economy. We must also say that we currently don't have a systematic research on the issue, so we don't uh, really know how um, in, in practice plat platforms deal with privacy aspects. Um, first insights, how uh, platforms actually deal with personal data uh, delivers a study that I conducted in cooperation with uh, Professor Hornhoff recently. Um, for the first time, we systematically explored the privacy statements of all 32 platforms that are currently active in Germany. Uh, with the privacy statements, the companies fulfill their legal obligations under the EU General Data Protection Regulation to inform about the data processing. Uh, the focus of our study was inter alia on the extent and the kind of collected and processed personal data. Uh, another aspect of interest for us was whether personal data are disclosed to third parties. Furthermore, we explored to what extent German platforms take active data protection measures, such as, for example, the establishment of data protection officers. The first uh, finding worth mentioning is that all investigated uh, 32 German crowd working platforms have privacy statements. Uh, this is remarkable um, because, uh, for example, uh, studies in the fintech uh, sector have shown uh, that fintech companies uh, don't uh, have in this extent uh, privacy statements. Um, we found out uh, that the extent of privacy statements uh, varied significantly. Um, the extent ranged from 1 to 35 uh, pages. Uh, furthermore, we found out uh, that there is a great variety in clarity and comprehensibility of statements. Um, some documents make very clear and differentiated statements about the processing of personal data from clients, workers, and website visitors. By contrast, other statements remain very vague and imprecise. 
On this graph, you can see, oh, I'm sorry, uh, the kind of personal data that are uh, collected by the German crowdworking platforms. Uh, most frequently mentioned are, for example, email address, first name and last name, and IP address. You can also see on this uh, slide uh, that um, specific data is collected from crowd workers, such as, for example, uh, qualification data or location data, or, um, for example, um, another uh, aspect. Another interesting finding was uh, that the privacy statements provide no evidence that sensitive personal data, such as religious beliefs, trade union membership, or health data that are mentioned in Article 9 GDPR are collected. Uh, however, it must be noted that uh, the information provided in the statements is explicitly not exhaustive. So the privacy statement said uh, that um, there might be other personal data that German crowd working platforms collect. Another uh, interest, uh, aspect of interest for us was um, the challenge for uh, privacy in the form of sharing and transfer of personal data to other companies or state authorities. Uh, maybe you have heard uh, from the Facebook uh, case. Um, recently, Facebook came under fire and criticism here because of its massive automatic data transfers. Uh, in our uh, study, in total, 88% of the platforms state that they, uh, in fact, disclose personal data with consent to third parties. Uh, the majority of these companies doesn't specify the recipients. Mm, most frequently, frequently mentioned purposes for the disclosure are contract performance, handling of payments, or advertising or marketing. Uh, another interesting uh, finding of our study was uh, that more than one third of platforms state that personal data are anonymized or pseudonymized. Mm, this result is quite good if we compare it with the privacy practices in the fintech sector, for example. Uh, a study that was carried out by uh, Professor Hornhoff has shown that only 1% of fintech companies have taken such data protection measures. A good practice example in the crowd working field is uh, the privacy statement of rapid user tests. This statement contains strict rules about the anonymity of testers. Furthermore, the company commits itself mm, to hold staff training on data protection. Another important lever for an effective data protection are rights for clients and workers to complain to supervisory bodies. Mm, to be able to exercise their rights, the persons concerned must need to know them. Our study showed in this regard that 50% of uh, platforms provide the contact details of data protection officers. Furthermore, 60% of companies mention rights to complain to independent state data protection authorities. And only very few companies don't mention such rights. So what are the conclusions that we can draw from our study. First of all, one has to state that German crowd working platforms have taken positive steps to inform about their privacy practice. We have also seen that they take proactive data protection measures. On the other side, we must state that the information provided by the platforms on their privacy practice is incomplete. So to come back to the federal chancellor's speech I mentioned in the beginning, the concerns regarding the privacy problems of crowd labor markets remain. So what could be, from a legal political perspective, 
key questions and tasks in the future. When we bear in mind that the legal classification of crowd workers as employees is unclear and uh, the applicability of employee data protection law is uncertain, one might consider, and I want uh, to put this in the following discussion, to develop new regulatory models beyond the traditional employee data protection. So thank you very much for your attention. Okay, so the floor is open again for questions. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, interesting contribution. I have two questions actually. The first is sample. Uh, the, the definition of, of um, a German uh, crowd working platform, is it German companies established in Germany or is it crowd working platforms active? I mean, w what exactly was the sample? Um, because sometimes I'm afraid that we are not aware <laughs> which platforms are active on, on our territories. Um, and then secondly, um, but that's, I don't know whether you studied it, um, because you, you mentioned that data could be shared with public authorities. Yeah, that that's, uh, was one of the uh, well, issues you had to look at. Um, is there here in Germany, does it already exist, or are there plans or whatever, uh, where the, the state authorities, the public authorities, do impose uh, that data are shared, for instance, income data? And I do refer here to France, where recently they introduced an obligation that platforms have to uh, inform uh, uh, income transfer to uh, platform users so that they get a grip on the income people get from, from platforms. The same is uh, being applied in Belgium in a slightly different way. It's more inviting uh, platforms to share data and if they do so, they get some fiscal advantages and especially the users get fiscal advantages, social fiscal advantages, but also the platforms they get less taxes, they are exempted from social protection, uh, and they try to uh, invite and uh, convince platforms to step into that data sharing with, uh, I don't know whether that's something which is, or is simply on a voluntary basis where one is sharing data with public authorities, but then I would like to know for what purposes they would do that. <coughs> um, to your first uh, question, um, we explored uh, the platforms that are currently active uh, in, in Germany. We. Uh, referred uh, to a um, study um, carried out by um, Professor Leimeister and others. Um, uh, and this study showed uh, that uh, 32 platforms are currently active in Germany. So have their seed and uh, are active here. Um, the second question you mentioned, uh, I don't really know um, if uh, we have in Germany new regulations on uh, data transfer to um, state authorities, to my knowledge, uh, we don't have such um, regulations. Um, but in general, um, our study has shown that uh, crowdworking platforms often uh, mention that um, in the context of fraud, for example, uh, data are transferred to public authorities. So this would be one example from the practice. I, I, I asked the last question because at least in the discipline where I do come from, from social law, uh, platforms are very often labeled as a kind of threat to uh, systems, to social systems, to labor law protection. They are the big evil, the thing you cannot uh, govern, which you cannot control, and so on and so forth. And there is indeed a major uh, danger that hidden economy and hidden income may grow uh, due to the uh, uh, presence of, of platforms. On the other hand, one of the advantages is that uh, much of the payments are done electronically. You can trace it down, you can track it down, uh, much more than, for instance, on construction sites where uh, money is being paid on the table and so on, and where it's much more hard to, 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 to track down uh, hidden, uh, hidden activities. Uh, but that, of course, presupposes that you kindly or less kindly invite platforms that they have to transfer uh, data, especially income data, um, and some countries already impose or experimenting with that. But f I do know that as soon as you start to talk about it, within a second, especially lawyers, they will say this is completely impossible because of data protection and uh, pri privacy protection. 
and you you cannot impose upon platforms that they have to share data because it's too sensitive and so on and so forth. And I don't know whether to what extent you as a lawyer within this project you have been touching upon upon this issue because I see also potential of controlling much more uh, income transfer than before, uh, if at least uh, you follow some logics and with respect of, of, of privacy, but it's not because you transfer some data that it's immediately in breaching a protection of, of, of privacy. Yes, I, I think uh, there might be or should be uh, justifications uh, for transfer of data in, in these uh, constellation you mentioned. But um, I don't know. The German discussion, I think, uh, I, I didn't, uh, I haven't uh, read uh, something about uh, these, uh, so much about this uh, debate. Um, with uh, regarding um, especially uh, privacy aspects. In, in general, yes, I, I would absolutely agree that uh, there should be a um, mechanism, um, as you mentioned it, and um, I don't know really if uh, the um, data protection law is a barrier or something like that in this uh, regard. Maybe directly following up on that, um, um, I guess that the point is, is, is also an economic one because, I mean, uh, even if there would be a regulation saying that, you know, you're not supposed to do that in general, right, that would be the rule, uh, then you get a, a consent by uh, your crowd worker and you ask them whether they provide consent or not. So if they do, you're allowed to transfer it, right, you write it in the statement. And the question for the crowd worker is, I mean, can he be part of the platform? Yes, if he signs the consent. If he doesn't sign, he's just out of the game. <laughs> so, and uh, I think uh, a lot of companies I talk to, uh, that's exactly what they tell me, right? I mean, they say like the general data protection regulation pff, doesn't matter for them, right? I mean, they just have a, a consent agreement, uh, customers sign it. I mean, what can they do? And I mean, we, we have the debate about the ratings before, right? I mean, if you have a big rating, uh, do you easily switch to the next platform? Not at all, right? I mean, you just stick there. And, uh, and then you sign the consent form, right? And then you can transfer data wherever you want. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's not good, uh, but I think it's, it's how it's currently working, right? Well, at least from the, the practice we notice in, in Belgium, I mean, we introduced this system uh, where we try to convince platforms and platform workers to uh, be open on income transfers. Um, and as a kind of uh, return, the first, the first uh, a tier of the income up to 6,150 euro a year is being exempted from taxes and social security. That's a kind of trade-off. So if you participate in that sharing of information, we exempt you from paying taxes and contributions. And they hoped that most of the platforms would step into this uh, uh, logic and approach, and that uh, kind of, uh, but many do, but especially smaller platforms and, and very often non-economically uh, or, or, or Non-profit with a profit goal or a profit objective and so on, but the big players. I mean, the, the, the let's say the multinational uh, platforms uh, like like Uber and Deliveroo. They kindly uh, thanked the Belgian authorities and said they they do not participate in this kind of initiative because they want to protect the privacy of their of their uh, people working for them and so on. So that now there's a, of course a discussion going on how to deal with this. Is this a um, I mean they still hope to to have them convinced, but Apparently, it's not so. Uh, I mean, it's also a power game, of course. Uh, Belgium is a, sm a small little nation. Uh, it's not because um, we ask them to do so that they will do, that they will do it rightly. I mean, I've I've seen some other examples, like in Denmark, where they showed more their feet and said, if you don't apply the rules, you can leave, even to the bigger ones. And that apparently worked more than than um, things like in Belgium, where they kindly build in some incentives and. Smaller platforms, they do so because they need it. I mean, they, they have to, but the bigger ones, they, they don't. They don't. I mean, they, they play a kind of uh, power game. Um, maybe um, with regard to the um, bigger platforms, uh, maybe something positive. Uh, from my impression, uh, concerning privacy aspects, um, the, the big uh, players, such as, for example, Clickworker, uh, have a better uh, privacy statement. So in this uh, regard, Maybe they have other uh, lawyers or something like that, but uh, to my impression, uh, the privacy statements of the bigger platforms were um, more detailed, more, um, more clear and so on. And so 
but uh, this is not a contradiction to that, what you said, not at all. Yeah, thank you very much for the presentation. You showed a very interesting slide about the different types of information that is collected by these platforms. So I was wondering, I think you don't have investigated that yet, but uh, I ask myself, is all this information really necessary for actually running such a platform? So I was wondering what came to my mind. Maybe it would be possible to, to design some work of reference workflow that's behind these platforms and actually look at this workflow and ask what type of information is really required to do so and maybe you will have some variation for this workflow but actually it's no, not a question but something that came to my mind because I initially thought is this really collected this data because it's necessary for running the workflow or is it really uh, just collected for them other things which do not uh, yeah, affect the functioning of the, of the platforms. Are there any ideas or intentions to go into this kind of direction? Yes, I, I think you, um, you mentioned the um, slide about uh, the collection of personal uh, data, the overview. Um, so we uh, decided um, not to differentiate between uh, website visitors, the collection of data from website visitors, uh, workers and uh, clients uh, because um, as I've already mentioned um, only um, I think a half or, or a third of platforms make uh, these differentiations so um, we uh, that's why we um, made the the slide or uh, had these um, uh, this whole overview and not uh, a difference Ma didn't make a dis difference but this is what you, you mentioned or what you meant or I hope I have answered your question. I, I would like uh, to see the, uh, the, the actual, actual connection between these different topics that might be the content of um, information taken by the platform and the possibility of digital exploitation because many of those w actually are nothing but an electronic personal uh, file and uh, well yes of course you should not put that out on the next uh, newspaper. But apart from that, that is not that much possibility of exploitation given by such type of data. So if we consider that there is the possibility of digital exploitation, that would probably not relate so much to the type of data that people actually are asked, but what during their digital work is automatically uh, surveyed on them. And that seems to provide much better possibilities for exploitation. So if it comes to data protection, you should not forget that all these platforms during their digital mechanisms sample a lot of data that might be much closer to what is finally the possibility for exploitation. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I think um, the, um, the Angela Merkel uh, was referring um, to the internet economy uh, as a, a totality, not, uh, and uh, she uh, didn't, uh, she wasn't uh, so specific uh, as you uh, were uh, now. Um, but uh, the context, of course, um, is um, this uh, danger or risk of uh, the surveillance uh, of uh, crowd working, of the crowd working process, and that we don't really know what uh, kind of data are collected and processed uh, in this uh, phase or in this regard. <laughs> 
Uh, thank you very much for the nice talk. Uh, I'm wondering if you are only considering the data that the user uh, needs to give while uh, creating the profile, or also you are considering the personal information that they have to give while working on a task. Because um, workers are complaining that during doing the task, they are asked from requesters for uh, personal information, and this is an issue for workers. Have you um, studied that part or uh, considered that? Or no, our uh, study um, was based on the um, analysis of uh, the privacy statements. So we don't really know what uh, happens if, if a person um, registers uh, at, on a platform. So this uh, maybe would be um, an important aspect for further studies or for further research to uh, explore uh, what uh, what happens after the the registration or the of the broker after the contracts uh, are concluded. So, so there is no rule for requests or not to asking such such info for such information, or is it already? Yes, I, I think you you need more systematic research, more uh, maybe expert interviews or something like that. Other methods than uh, the privacy statements, because uh, the statements are not uh, complete, as I've mentioned in this uh, regard. So. Yeah, one thing that shouldn't be recorded, uh, but what we intend as a second uh, step of the research project is to register at the platform and to see which data they are actually collecting on us and then see whether that matches with the data uh, protection regulation uh, statements. Um, and then uh, we see actually whether they collect more data than what they are claiming they are collecting in their uh, privacy statements. So that's actually the second step we want to do in the next uh, weeks. Thank you. It's probably a very naive and, and simple question. I mean, do, do you know when you see such a statement whether it's it complies with the law or not? I mean, um, yes, I I try to <laughs> I examine this as a lawyer. I uh, had take, took a closer look at uh, this question, and to my impression, um, the the. Um, decisive point here is um, the time for the um, collection of the data because uh, the obligation uh, according to the EU general data uh, protection regulation to inform um, about the, the collection process refers to the uh, time when um, the, the collection starts and um, when the um, the, this uh, time, I think um, the privacy statements, um, they, they comply with the law in, in this regard because uh, we, we, didn't, uh, we don't know what, uh, what, is, what happens after the registration, for example. There should be new uh, information obligations. But in a first step, I would say uh, they comply with uh, this obligation to inform about the collection process. Uh, when they are incomplete, so despite this fact. Okay. Um, yep. Just a comment, this would be nice to have a sort of a benchmark, clear benchmark, so privacy statements comply with the law if these conditions are met. And then the second question is, of course, interesting, do they do what they say? That's, that's, that's a very interesting pair of questions, I think. I would also have a question uh, to Sonia and maybe also to Paul. Uh, what you mentioned uh, before was that uh, the larger companies are not that eager uh, to transfer data to the authorities. And I, as an economist, I always think about prices, right? So I thought about, well, I mean, foreign companies can probably be not uh, be taken care of that easily, right? I mean, they're abroad. I mean, you can tackle them down in some way, but it's not as easy as if you have the company right in your country, right? And then the thing is, I mean, why would you actually transfer the data, right, what your people are doing, uh, because then you're revealing what they're actually doing, right? And uh, then it might turn out, well, they're working a lot and they don't pay taxes for that, right? And uh, th at the time when you're not complying uh, and you're not telling anyone uh, what they're actually doing at the platform, you can decrease wages uh, because, you know, you don't pay the, the 
add on uh, of whatever social security taxes and so on and you have a big incentive actually not to reveal it and uh, so do you both think that this is actually taking place and uh, in this sense I would say well actually technology would help us a lot right I mean we would like to have the transfer because you could actually protect uh, workers uh, yeah by using the technology and by transferring data right Well, as, as to the first part, it's indeed a concern that when you have uh, legislation which is nationally designed and nationally being uh, controlled, and most of the action is taking place abroad, uh, overseas, uh, US for instance, or China or whatever. I mean, uh, and, and the question is, what is then overseas? Is it, uh, I mean, what is in, is, is it where the server is? Is it where the, I don't know, I mean, that, that's indeed, I mean, to control and to, to, to align and to make sure that they are in line with your legislation. If you have strong, fierce legislation, it's not easy. Um, secondly, what I noticed, but I mean, this is not scientifically, of course, uh, being documented, but well, I've been traveling around, at least in, in many of the European Union countries lately, and especially uh, smaller nations. Eh? I mean, uh, you have many of them in the European Union. Um, it's not easy for them um, to try to impose some tax law or social law on companies which maybe have a budget which is uh, far bigger than the national budget. Uh, very often the countries are then indirectly threatened that there are some interesting business opportunities, but of course if you make life too difficult to us, there are plenty of other little countries who may have interest of uh, and so on. So this is a game which I think is being played not only about platforms, it's simply played by, by multinationals overall. So uh, that's, that's a bit uh, reality. I think bigger countries have less of that kind of problem, but, but they may then have another issue that, that uh, let's say a country like Ireland was known that for, for some reason, for some tax reasons, tax reasons, they were quite lenient to, to a very, well, a not too harsh approach and so on and so forth. I don't have to explain more, I think. Uh, you know that much of the GDP income is, is going back to the US, eh, coming from Ireland. Um, as to the second um, question, um, I don't have hard da data on, on it, but I think that indeed that if the data are not being shared or not being uh, given to the, the state, and why would they? Eh? Because if they don't consider themselves to be an employer, if they were an employer, they had to eh, by, by law. But if you don't consider yourself to be an employer, but simply a kind of intermediary, why would you, you, would, you would you give data? And then the danger exists, of course, when I have do some little jobs on the platform, why should I unveil my income to the state? Now, this may sound shocking to some of you, but I think in most of the, well, most of, well, most European citizens, and well, depending a little bit on the state where they are, I mean, if you can try to not to unveil your income, you, you, you would try to do it. And, uh, I already have heard that um, countries like having kind of minimum thresholds for tax reasons or for social reasons, exempting payment, if you earn less than that minimum threshold, that by accident many people earn up to that minimum threshold, um, uh, but not never uh, beyond it, which I think can be an indication that... Uh, so yes, um, I think that's the danger, that therefore I think hidden economy may uh, rise again. Um, and... Why would they share data? Well, if you compel them, they have to. Uh, and uh, but I'm, I, I also notice that some states even there do not dare to compel uh, or to make laws to have those data shared. I mean, if you compare the Belgian with the French approach, the French approach is compelling. We will see whether it will work. Uh, but they are a bigger nation, of course. The Belgian approach is trying to convince, uh, which is a different approach. And well, we'll see how it will work out. Yes, I, I, to, to add uh, to this, maybe I think it's also in question uh, how effective would be uh, such a um, supervision or so the question uh, what kind of regulatory models uh, could be uh, useful to, um, to provide solutions for these problems. So should incentives, uh, incentive based regulation is it maybe better than a, a compulsory regulation or more effective, maybe, or not? Okay. Are there any more questions? Um, 
if not, uh, we have a 10 minutes uh, longer break. I think everyone would appreciate that. And uh, we can have uh, coffee and uh, snacks outside and drinks. And we meet again at uh, quarter past uh, four.